it looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved, uh, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you. Uh, We're going to be chatting with Doug. And Doug comes to us from Arkansas. And he had a very, very strange encounter driving home one night. And I've actually heard this before. Off the air, I've probably heard this a dozen times or more. Um, Most of the time, actually, I would say 99% of the time, uh, the eyewitness does not want to come on the show because it's such a weird, something so strange happened. Uh, They just don't want to come on, but Doug was willing to come on, and I I really do appreciate the fact that he would come on and share this. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com, and if you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Doug to the show. Doug, thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you for having me, Wes. Yeah, Doug, I really appreciate you being here. And I told you privately when we were talking, I've heard this sort of thing. Maybe that's why it doesn't shock me as much. I've actually heard this at least a dozen times in private conversations off the air. Um, And and I'm at a loss as far as what's actually going on. Uh, So I can't thank you enough for coming on and and sharing it with everyone. I know it happened in Arkansas, and I know it happened uh, the beginning of this year. If you would, would you just kind of start from the beginning, kind of tell us what you were doing and and what happened? Okay, well, I had been doing some work up in uh, just north of Batesville at a a store up there, and uh, I was driving home. It was was just after sunset, probably, you know, this is early in the year and so it was getting dark about seven o'clock then this is probably about seven thirty seven forty five somewhere in there and i had just left uh the city lights of the latest little town i was driving through and this was probably this is north central arkansas by the way so i was just i was just left the city and i was getting into some uh i know i've, I've heard you talk about you were used to deer hunters still deer hunting uh you know, people hunt the bottoms. You know what they call the bottoms? Yeah. Well, I, I was driving through some lowland areas, and it was kind of swampy. Bottoms is what I, I think of. And uh, we were driving along on a two-lane highway, and it was a wooded area. Uh, really no houses around at, at the place I was at. And there's uh, me and probably three or four cars in front of me, and it was 55 mile an hour highway. We were driving somewhere around 65 ish. And, um, 
man, it's just, I know you said you've heard things like this before, but this, I, I thought I knew a lot of stories about Bigfoot and Sasquatch and I've never heard of anything like this, but just from out of nowhere, this thing, I bet my first impression was it was a, it was an, it was an orangutan. That's what it looked like. It had, it had sort of longish reddish hair, you know, uh, it was on all fours and it just came darting out into the highway between the car in front of me and myself. And like I said, we were clipping along at about 65 miles per hour. And this thing was fast enough on all fours. It managed to get between me and the car I was following. And I was about probably maybe two seconds behind the car in front of me. And, uh, it did, <laughs> it, it came out and I, I could see it was holding something in its mouth and it, it turned and it looked at me and it was, had a raccoon hanging out of its mouth, a rather large one, not a, maybe not a full grown adult, but it was a big raccoon and it had it by its back and it turned and looked at me. And at that split second, I smacked him just right dead square in the head in the middle of my hood. And, um, the thing is though, <laughs> it didn't, it's easy to remember, but saying it out loud just makes me just think this is really crazy, but it is really true. Um, there was like a flash of some sort. And it's like, it was so bizarre. It was like, it, okay, the thing that happened was this thing ran out on all fours, had a raccoon in its mouth, and I hit it, okay? But the flash made it seem like it took forever for that to happen. And and, uh, and I when I impacted I was on the phone with my girlfriend at the time and she started screaming and hollering, thinking that I had had a head on collision or hit a tree or otherwise crashed because it was so loud, so jarring when I hit this thing. And, uh, you know, I had to reassure her, you know, I'm okay. I've hit something. I didn't know what it was. And I didn't want to say I hit a monkey, you know, and I certainly wasn't about to say, hey, I just hit a Sasquatch because I didn't know what in the world I hit. And I just know I hit it really hard. And uh, so I, I stopped. And um, I got out thinking, I got out with a flashlight. And uh, I was thinking, oh, man, I just told my car out, you know, and I've got this poor animal I just hit. I have no clue what it was, but I got to make sure, you know, it's not out there suffering or whatever. And first thing I noticed is my hood was not buckled. And I was like, oh, well, okay, that's that's good. But I bet you I tore the whole front end off. And I got around front and I was looking, both my headlights were still on and there was no damage to my car, man. There was nothing, no damage whatsoever. No, you could not tell anything had happened, but it was, I hit it. There's no way it could have got out of the way. And, and I hit something obviously, because my girlfriend thought I had a crash, you know, and I felt it and I, it, I hit it, man. And there was no damage to my car. And so I, kind of was like okay a little bit relieved but just more or less mystified at how i had no damage you know i was thinking oh it's a miracle great you know then I'm, I'm angels were with me tonight and i started to look for traces of whatever it was i hit and there was blood all down the right hand the passenger side of my vehicle like i mean it was it was very bloody and gory down the right hand side of my car and uh, I was like, oh, great. You know, I don't know what this was. I hope it wasn't somebody's pet or something, you know. And and so I start walking back down the highway to see where I, at the impact occurred and where it hit it. And I got to about the spot, which was probably maybe 100 yards back. You know, it took me a good 60, 70, 80 yards to stop. And uh, I started walking down the highway, and I kept walking and walking and walking. I was like, well, I know it had to have been around somewhere. And there was no blood in the highway whatsoever anywhere. I mean, nothing, not a trace, not any hair. There was nothing. And so, I mean, I, at that point, I just really started thinking, okay, well, whatever I hit must have just somehow escaped from being a bloody pulp on the highway. And now I've got to look for it in the woods or in the ditch somewhere because it's suffering. So I was listening and the woods were, were completely quiet. You know, it was early in the year, so there was, the insects weren't really out yet. So the woods were really quiet. And I didn't hear anything and I didn't hear anything running. I didn't hear anything, you know, making any sort of distress call or 
anything. And then I just got the chills because I started thinking about that flash. And then I started thinking about there's no damage. And then I started thinking about, well, I know I hit something and there's no damage. There's a flash. This is not right. I'm getting the hell out of here, you know. And so I walked back to my car and I got in and I took off and went down. I went that that's what happened. I went down the road and I got some pictures of what happened and everything. But that's basically what happened, you know. Yeah, and I'm fascinated by your encounter, Doug. I really am. And and I've heard this sort of thing off the air. I've heard it several times privately off the air. Most people who experience this sort of thing, you know, Bigfoot's weird enough. Uh they don't want to come forward and talk about this portion of it. Uh, but it does go on. And, I, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in a moment. I want to ask you, so when you hit this thing, you actually felt the impact. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had my seatbelt on, and thank God I did. I mean, it was, as, it was as if I had hit whatever it is I know I hit. I mean, it was a horrible impact. I mean, it was it was jarring. It was loud. It was, like I say, it was loud enough my, that my girlfriend, Tina, she, she was like, she thought I had been in a head-on you know and it was that loud to her over the phone and uh then you know when i finally was back on the phone with her i told her what had happened and, and she was just like well thank god you're okay and it, if i wouldn't have had my seatbelt on it might have been a different story because it was it, it it was it felt like i hit a brick wall it really did i mean albeit a, a thin brick wall that was standing on its own you know and i mowed it over but it was like i hit a brick wall and there was just n no sign of me hitting anything except for the blood. And, uh, you know, like I was telling you earlier, it, when it looked like, well, it didn't look like it did, had a raccoon hanging out of its mouth. And I did, weirdly enough, find some hair under my uh, front fender well on the passenger side that appeared to be raccoon hair. But there was no red hair. There was some, certainly no impact area on my hood i mean it's it was still glowing i just waxed my car and it's still glowing <laughs> so i don't know i don't know what to think i i um that somebody i've never heard of anyone encountering a flash with a bigfoot and we were talking off the air earlier and you said that, that a couple of stories came to mind and i was i was i was amazed by that because i thought you know even someone like yourself would have had a rough time believing this, you know, but man, I, I really appreciate you talking to me about it. Yeah, of course. Of course. I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. It was probably three months ago or so. Um, I talked to this guy here in Washington state, he's a hunter and he came across what he described as an ape man. And he said, it didn't look like the Patterson Gimlin uh, creature in that film at all. And he's not really into Bigfoot. He's actually a retired medical doctor. And this thing growled, turned, and charged him. And he said when he shot, it just wasn't there anymore. And I asked him, what, what do you mean it wasn't there anymore? And, you know, he said that it was just gone. So this stuff does actually go on. Um, and, and there's uh, several other accounts we can discuss. But I'm curious, within the accident, did your airbags actually go off? No, no. And that is, that's something that's really, you know, it, it, those things are made to deploy at, at around a 30 mile an hour crash, you know, and it doesn't even take a lot. You can kick somebody's bumper and set their airbags off. And this thing, it, like I said, it, its head on, on all fours, mind you, its head was right at hood height which on my car is probably around, give or take, three and a half feet. And uh, the, it, the rest of its body, though, the hindquarters and everything, it extended past my passenger side fender. It was, it was pretty long looking. And, and it would have got, my point is, is it would have hit one of the sensors in the bumper to set the airbags off and know they did not deploy. And so I, I, I highly doubt it's a malfunction. I mean, I don't, I really don't think it's a malfunction with my car. It just, I mean, it would go right along with no damage being done. You know, it's just one of those things that was just, you know, when it happened, I was kind of in a little bit of shock, I guess. I mean, like anybody would be. And um, I didn't really give it a whole, whole lot of thought. But the more I was, you know, I was driving down the road after it happened and I was reflecting on it. And it just gave me the chills, you know, because I, I just felt like I, 
I, I had the same kind of chills as if somebody told you they saw a ghost. You know, it's like you're just not prepared for it. Your brain is not wired to understand these type of things. Or at least mine's not, you know. And um, I, I could not fathom how in the world something this large could be hit by a car going that fast and, and it not do any damage to the vehicle. I just it's unheard of. I've never in my life heard of such a thing. And that goes, like you were saying, to the, I guess they call it the woo-woo Bigfoot or whatever, the paranormal side of Bigfoot. And, and I don't know. I mean, that's where they, you know, they, they talk about it, it being an inter interdimensional creature. And that flash possibly was a portal or something is what I was told, you know, by some people. And I just don't know about that. You know, I'm kind <laughs> I mean, I'm on the fence, but it sure would explain a lot, you know. It would explain a lot if it was an interdimensional being, creature, thing, person, whatever it is, whatever it was. It would it would totally explain why I could not go back and find any trace of it. Because if you hit any animal, you know, you either roll over it or you smack it and you see it go flying off in your headlights in front of you or off the road or something. No, this did not happen. It's like as soon as I hit it, there was no other trace of it. I mean, I hit it, and there's, there's nothing there, you know. And I don't know what to believe. I just really just blows my mind thinking about it. And, and talking about it, like I say, saying it out loud just makes me sound that much crazier. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't, think it, I don't think it sounds crazy at all, Doug. Uh, I've heard it. Like I said, I've heard it before. And you're right. In, in the Bigfoot world, which I try and stay out of, you know, the Bigfoot researchers – what they do with their time is they argue with each other and they they fight with each other and so I wouldn't be taking too many opinions from most of them but um, you know they there's a paranormal side and then there's kind of a flesh and blood ape side and and it, it always amazes me that people are unwilling to hear other people out on their weird encounters you know these people believe in a eight to ten eleven foot tall ape you know, that weighs anywhere between a thousand and two thousand pounds running through the woods, yet they're going to boohoo something like this. I mean, we're kind of splitting hairs at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, though. I mean, it's kind of, yeah, but this is just, it's, it was just a, a an amazing, an amazing, incredible, absolutely unpredictable. I couldn't. I could have went the rest of my life and 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 never had anything like this happen, you know, and I hope it never does again. You know, I mean, that's not I've always told myself I would love to actually see one of these creatures out in the wild and me see it, not me. It see me for for sure. <laughs> and but I didn't want to do it like this. I don't even know that that's what it was. I just know that this thing, whatever it did, fits the description of what. You know, one of the types of Sasquatch that are supposedly out there, you know, the the more orangutan, more apish, reddish, brown hair. It, this was it, man. I mean, it, that, I didn't really think about it. Sasquatch was the last thing on my mind when I was getting out of my car. You know, I didn't know what it was. It just I had no clue what it was. And it, it Sasquatch was the last thing on my mind, I'll tell you that. You know, it's just wild, just crazy. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, can we back up for just a moment, Doug? Right before the moment of impact, uh, can you kind of describe what you saw? Okay, okay. What I saw was a was a creature. It looked like an animal. You know, it was it was it was clearly clearly moving way too fast to be a cow, and it had absolutely no recognized recognizing traits of a cow it was not a deer i've seen thousands upon thousands of deer here in arkansas and it was not a dog it was not a the coyote it was not it was not a beaver it was not this thing looked like a monkey okay for the for the people listening it looked like an orangutan uh if if <sighs> If you go to the, you see the big fat orangutans, you know, with the red hair and the the dark faces and stuff, it really, really looked very similar to that, only this thing was trim. It was not fat at all. It was trim and it was it had 
I would say more of a red tint to its hair. Probably the I didn't. It, it, you're right. It happened within milliseconds, but I saw the front arms, and I say arms and not legs because it looked like arms. The 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 rear haunch looked like legs, and the front looked like arm arms. That's why I'm calling it, uh, it looking like an orangutan because that's the only thing I can think of that would be on all fours that had both arms and legs, you know. And um, and so this thing is, is just coming up just from off the side of the highway, and it's a dark area, you know. I couldn't see anything but where my headlights were shining on the car in front of me. And um, it just came running on all fours up in front of me. I could see something in its mouth, and it turned right i mean just there was no time to react even i couldn't even take my foot off the gas pedal fast enough to react and i hit it but it turns it, it time slows down you talk about time slowing down in a car accident that's exactly what it felt like it felt like a literal frame by frame this is going to happen you are about to hit this boom you know it, it's that's how it felt and but it turned and looked at me straight on its face was right in my headlights I got a very, very clear picture of its face. I can see it right now as I'm talking about it. And the, the, the face was not your average orangutan's face. This, this, well, first off, the mouth was extraordinarily large. I'm, I don't know how big an orangutan's mouth is. You know, I don't really know. But this thing's mouth, it, 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 it was huge. The head, it, it you know, like I was telling you earlier, it kind of looked like a watermelon shape. It was like a giant ovalish shape. And the mouth probably, if you were thinking of it as a watermelon on this thing's head, on the shoulders, the mouth would take up an entire piece of the watermelon all the way across of it. This is that big. And it had this raccoon and his entire back in its mouth. And, and it turned and looked at me with these huge eyes. The eyes were absolutely huge. And like, I mean, like it was scared out of its wits and knew what was about to happen or like it was uh, about to go on the offensive one or the other. But it looked crazy and it's it just looked at me and I, I impacted it and it was gone. I didn't see it fly off. I didn't jump up in the air like I had run over something. I didn't um, <laughs> nothing. There's no car parts falling off. There's no glass breaking. There, I fully, fully, fully expected to see the thing go flying off the side of the road, just like any other creature you hit. And, and, and you know, it's just physics. You know, if you hit something, the, the thing with the most mass is going to win every time. And uh, and, and I, did, I didn't see that. I hit it. I felt the impact. But I never saw what happened to it. I never saw where it went after I hit it. And so, but yeah, it, it basically looked like an orangutan. Okay. That's, I mean, that's the bet for the listeners. Just picture an orangutan on all fours running out in front of your vehicle and you hit it. That's basically what happened. Yeah. I appreciate you describing it, Doug. I know all this is happening very, very quickly. Um, I, I want to ask you, how, how big do you think the creature actually was? I, I, it's hard for me to tell. I mean, I know it was, uh, it was a. Uh, you could see. You could see the, the in the shoulders. You know, it was on, like I said, it was on all fours. It had its head kind of down, like it was, like it was, you know, on a mission. It was seriously trying to get somewhere really fast. And it only raised its head right when it knew I was about to hit it, and which was immediately. But it seemed like it took forever, and it raised its head and turned and looked at me, but. As far as size, you could see that it had some width to its back, but it was I could I was looking at it from the side view, and in in my car, the the driver's seat sits pretty low as compared to the hood, so I was about eye level with his back, and so I can't I really couldn't even begin to guess, but it was it was in the several hundred pound range. It had to have been because just just from how big it looked. You could see the the muscles in the back, you know, as it was, it was as it was getting it, you know, it was it was it was moving on all fours. You could see them, the shoulder muscles were above the backbone, you know, so you could see that it had some mass to it. But I I couldn't. It, it would have to be 
several hundred pounds. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even sit here in line and say I know exactly a ballpark for you. But it was big. It was big. Yeah, and the features really match up with uh, Sasquatch. You know, a lot of the features that you mentioned, Doug. And, you know, it, and even to the mouth, you know, having a large mouth and, you know, a raccoon's not a very large animal, but it's a big animal to have in your mouth. You know what I mean? Right. If you're looking at, you know, the average adult raccoon, it could be 20 pounds, maybe, you know. And, I mean, they they get, say it was a small one, say it was 8 to 10 pounds, that's still a huge animal to have in your mouth. You know, I can't think of a coyote that could have a, you know, a, a an adult looking raccoon and just it, it, its mouth took. I'll tell you, this this is give you an idea how big the mouth was. It looked like it had it behind the neck, but its mouth was clamped on its back. That's how big the mouth was on this thing. And the raccoon was not a small raccoon. It was not a baby. Like I say, it, it wasn't just your giant oh my god look at how big that raccoon is but it was not a baby and um and and the, the thing its mouth one corner of his mouth was kind of pinched behind the neck where the where the uh probably about where the shoulders on the the front shoulders of a raccoon would be right in that area from what i can remember but it took up most of its back with its mouth i mean it was it was, it was a big mouth <laughs> That's that's really the the mouth and the eyes. You know, if you ask me to describe its face, I'm just stuck. And I saw its face clearly. I can see its face clearly in my head right now. But I am just stuck on how big the eyes and the mouth were, because his eyes were wide awake and wide open, staring at me. And God, it's giving me kind of chill bumps right now. It's wild, man. It's just really wild, because. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't I couldn't describe his nose. I couldn't tell you what the ear shape was like, or even if it had ears on its head, you know. Because, like I say, I was fixated on its face, looking dead at me, and all I could see was that thing with that raccoon in its mouth and huge eyes. And that's when I hit it, and I never saw it again. So I don't I couldn't tell you anything else about it really. Yeah, but no, I I get it. Did you when you went back? Did you ever find the raccoon? No. No, I did not find the raccoon either, but, you know, like I say, that I did find some hair under my front tire, my front fender well on the passenger side. I found some hair under there because I was, I was in full Sasquatch mode after I thought about how bizarre it was and what it looked like to me. Because I, I have, I started thinking to myself, I hadn't mentioned it to my girlfriend, of course, but I was thinking Sasquatch and I pulled over at a gas station. I never told you that part. Uh, I went down the road and stopped at the next gas station and it was all lit up. It was like a road runner truck stops kind of gas station. And I stopped there cause it had really good lighting and I was just out just going over my car and, uh, there was so much blood. It looked like I had, it looked like I had stopped on top of something and just done a burnout on it. I mean, there was my right rear, only on the right side, though. And my right rear tire, I have kind of low-profile tires on my car. That means, you know, the sidewall is really short. And um, the blood was thick around it all the way to the rim. It, I mean, it, co it covered the side of the tire in the back all the way up to the rim. The front tire didn't have a lot of blood on it, but there was a lot of blood under my fender well, and there was blood all down the bottom side of my passenger side door, all, blood all on my uh, passenger side quarter panel in the back of the car. And it, it, you would think that I had, had just tore something apart. And it did, it, it, I never saw anything. And there was, and like I say, I walked down the highway just further than I really anticipated I would have to, to look for the impact site. And I didn't ever see any blood in the highway, which is, which is, that's crazy too. You know, I mean, to have as much blood on my car, it looked like I had, it, it looked like I had stopped on top of a dead cow and just, just spun my wheels. That's, I mean, there was a lot of blood. And there was just nothing there. There's nothing in the highway, nothing in the ditches, nothing anywhere I could find. And it really, it did freak me out pretty bad. Yeah, so strange, man. 
So strange. You know, this may seem like an odd question, but I'm going somewhere with it. Um, can you kind of describe the the light that you saw? The flash. Okay, the the flash was. Um, it was first off. It was very fast. I mean, you know, going back to how fast the the accident or the impact happened. Um, it was it was half of the time it took for that. So it was super fast, but it was just like almost like you. I, it was not like a like somebody took a picture, kind of a flash, you know, type of a strobing, you know, send it out there, kind of a flash, you know. It was it was like it was it was it was more just like a a dull light that just emanated for a, a just a millionth of a second and went away. I mean, it, it didn't seem like the light. When I say it wasn't like a flash, I guess what I'm trying to say now that I'm thinking about it, it didn't look like the flash could even reach me. It was more like I was observing a flash rather than the flash coming out at me, if that makes sense. I mean, I, it was like there was there was nothing like nothing in my car lit up. OK, maybe that's a better way to describe it. When I saw this flash, it was not like it lit my car up like, you know, like I was saying earlier when we talked, it, it, like a helicopter just flew over and had its night sight on or whatever. Uh, it wasn't like that. There's the, the light did not get on my car or me or it, it didn't light up the highway. It didn't light up the trees in the woods. It was just a flash. And that's the best way I can describe it. It just, I was observing something that uh, it was a light that was there and not there. That's a better way to say it than a flash. It was a light that was there and then not there. That's a, that's the best way I can put it. And it didn't, it, it, yeah, it wasn't illuminating, you know, it was just a, it was a flash that didn't illuminate, I guess. And that's just sounding ridiculous. I know, but that's, I can't really describe it to you, I guess. I mean, I just, it's hard to describe. No, I don't think it sounds ridiculous at all. I know Stan Gordon, he's a UFO. He started out as a UFO investigator, and he was actually looking into cases in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, and these creatures kept popping up. You know, people would say, oh, and by the way, I saw this weird creature running around, and they're describing Sasquatch. And there was an old lady that um, came out. She said this creature kept bothering her, and she opened the door and it was on the porch and she shot it with a shotgun and then there was like a a light and it was gone and it's a bizarre account i've been trying to dig it up um the the retired doctor that i was telling you about earlier the hunter um i asked him that question i really was trying to understand what did he mean when he said he fired and it was gone i asked him you know was it like a flash of light and he said no it wasn't a flash of light he said it was more like a glimmer of light, and then it's like time and space opened up, and this thing was gone. Um, and that's kind of the way he described it. That's 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 the that's a better description than I could have ever thought to say because that's that's exactly what it felt like. I don't know if it, I, I can say it, it it looked like that, but that's what it felt like. It, it was more of a, a feeling that it was just. It was a flash that I was never used to or had seen before, but that was a that's a very good description, you know. Like that, there was a, a a rip in time and space because you know, like I was saying, it just it seemed like maybe it did. I don't know, but it seemed like it's the time slowed down. I don't know. I've never been in a car crash, you know. So you say it seems like to a lot of people the time slows down. Maybe it does, but that's what it felt like. It felt like an and like an otherworldly type of flash, not to, you know, not to, not to sound too ridiculous about it, but it, it that's exactly what it felt like. He, he was exactly right. And that's a good description. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Doug, the, the very strange part about all of this, uh, every encounter I've been told privately where this sort of thing happens, um, I'll ask that, I'll ask the eyewitness, you know, what was a creature doing prior to this happening? And I'll, I'll say almost every time, except for two occasions I can think of, the creature's doing something you would expect a natural animal to do. You know, like in your case, it was eating, it had a raccoon in its mouth, and then bam, this happens. 
it's it's bizarre. Most of the time, they're doing something you would expect a natural animal to do. Uh, it doesn't get any more predator prey than than to see something running with another animal in its mouth. It just got for you know to consume or whatever. Uh, that's exactly what was going on. I just and like I say, that did I just. I've never encountered a Bigfoot. Always wanted to, never have. And uh, I mean, I've I've been kind of run out of the woods by something I thought was Bigfoot, but that's another story. <laughs> and that was when I was deer hunting. Um, but this, when I got out of my car, even though I had seen what was clearly to me an orangutan in the wild in Arkansas of all places, when I got out of my car, Sasquatch was the very last thing on my mind. You know, I. I if I thought I had injured a Sasquatch from all the horror stories I've heard of people shooting at them and things and what they're capable of, the, the last thing I'd do is get out of the car, you know, because that thing could come in my car if it wanted to get to me, you know. And so I I just the last thing on my mind was a Sasquatch. And that's a, just I can't I can't get away from the notion that that's exactly what I'm describing, you know, like you said. So it's just it's just it's it's something that i never i never would expect to encounter and 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 now i can't get away from thinking about it like right now it's getting you know it's pretty nighttime here and if i was to have to drive through a set of woods that was you know out in the rural part right now the only thing on my mind would be watching the sides of the roads for another orangutan I can't get away from thinking about it when I'm at night in the woods and I'm driving. I just, it's just, it's like I have some kind of PTSD over the thing or something, you know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I hear you. And you know, it's one of those things to where it sounds like a Sasquatch. I mean, but who knows what it was? You know what I mean? We still can't figure out what Sasquatch is. Um, I'm curious in your opinion, what, what do you really think it was? In my opinion right now, it was, it was exactly what I said. <laughs> it was either an orangutan or yeah, it was it was a bigfoot of some type, because there's just nothing I can think of that would match what I hit. Nothing in the wild that I've ever experienced, ever heard about, ever seen, ever heard of anything. You know, I mean, it's just it was either an orangutan or it was a bigfoot. That's the only two options I'm down to, and and with the flash thing. Yeah, I don't. I've never heard of someone singing an orangutan at the zoo and it make a flash and it's all of a sudden back in this little cage somewhere, you know. So, <laughs> you know, it kind of leaves us with just one option, you know. It's so strange, you know. Your average Sasquatch encounter going across the road is strange, you know. They're all weird. Um, what do you think that Sasquatch is? What do I think Sasquatch is? That is that is one heck of a question because. I am the last person on earth to be able to possibly, I know just enough about Sasquatch to make me dangerous. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 and uh, I don't, the more I know, the more I know really not enough about it. I just, the, the things that it's got to be, okay, <laughs> if we're going by what happened with me, it's it, then that would put Sasquatch as some type of oh I don't know some type of interdimensional uh, possibly human hybrid or or just super smart ape uh, <laughs> you know I've never really tried to think about exactly what it is I used to think. That it was just, you know, growing up the Patterson Gimlin thing. I used to think it was just a monster that lived in Oregon and somebody happened to see it. And the more I hear about it and the different types of it and the and the things that people have seen them doing and and, and then the the I never really give too much credence to the paranormal side of it, or at least I haven't in the past. But now I don't know what to call uh, Sasquatch creatures because it makes me wonder if you put a label on well this sasquatch creature that i saw it jumped dimensions and well this one i saw was 
fishing for trout and it got hit by a boulder and died. You know, I mean, where's, are they all interdimensional? Are they all, you know, do they, are there some of them that are vegetarian? I, I don't know what the thing is. I just know that they are, they're, they're smart enough to remain hidden. I believe that they're an extremely intelligent um carbon based life form and um i believe that they they eat drink sleep do everything like a well like a mammalian you know like a mammal and um I, how they jump dimensions i don't know if there's if that's even possible you know it could i've heard of an alien sasquatch connection you know, people sometimes report UFOs and then they'll have a Sasquatch encounter or whatever. And maybe the flash I saw was this thing getting beamed up. You know, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but now we're way off in the deep end anyway. So ridiculous might be possible. I don't know. I don't know what these things are, but I, I know that they're physical. I don't believe for one second that there's some type of a floating ghost out there that can disappear and appear you know just at will like I, god now i'm this goes totally counter to what uh, happened with me though see what i'm saying i don't know what these things are i'm sorry man i just don't i can't tell you i don't know i don't have a clue <laughs> i don't have a clue i know that they're really something bizarre that if it if it was a if it was a normal i'll tell you this if it was a normal creature normal animal of this earth that was just you know, nothing to it. Yeah, it's just another biological carbon-based life form walking around, eating, breathing shit and bubbling that, you know. If it was that, then there would be no issue with having categorized it scientifically by now. Because they, they've got, and I say when they, the scientific community that's serious about this, they know that they're out there. And the government has to know they're out there. And it, it, by laughing it off they're just more or less admitting that they don't want people to know about them you know because they're there there's way too many people that see them they're the hell there's hundreds of thousands of pictures and videos and not all of them are faked not every damn one of them are faked so there's something out there and if they're laughing it off like it's a joke and it's not real that just tells me there's something to it you know there's something to these particular creatures that we're really not supposed to be enlightened about you know I don't know, man. I'm just kind of one way around it, I guess. I don't know what they are. Yeah, I hear you. And I respect your answer. And no one really knows what Sasquatch is. And your frustration is my frustration because there's a lot of times where uh, they do seem to be very much like a natural animal doing what you would assume a natural animal would do. But there is these encounters uh, that do happen. And the strange part is when you talk to people in a private setting like I do, where they're not on the air like how we are now, Doug, and it's just me and someone else talking, uh, they're very consistent on what they're saying. You know, you'll get five, six, 12 people all telling you the exact same thing privately, separately, off the air. That, that should be proof enough, standing on its own, that you have different random people describing basically a hundred percent the same type of creature or or the same thing in a scenario with that type of creature and they're not all just linked together with their brains making this stuff up if they don't know each other never talked before how in the world are they going to come up with the same story you know that right there should be proof enough for anyone you know the, the, there's something out there these people are not just random crazies making up lies for the hell of it you know it's, it's just yeah it's frustrating for sure yeah. yeah, it's one of those encounters, Doug, will, that will definitely stay with you. Um, you know, and I, I realize it's shocking, and probably to the audience, it might be shocking to hear it. And maybe I have a different perspective because I've heard this privately several times over. Um, and what's strange is the people are very, very consistent on what they're telling you across the board, just like you were, Doug. Uh, in, in kind of recounting what happened to you. And I wish I had a great answer for you. I wish I could say, well, it was this, but, you know, Sasquatch, people can't even explain what Sasquatch is, including me. 
And so it becomes frustrating, but these encounters do go on. These very strange encounters absolutely go on. Um, and I really don't know what to make of it. And I'm so glad that you came on the air because, you know, a lot of times when I've heard this privately, people refuse to come out publicly and talk about it. And I think it takes a lot of courage to come forward. It takes a lot of courage to come forward with any Sasquatch encounter, uh, but maybe a little bit more courage because you have this extra weird detail to your encounter. And uh, I just can't thank you enough, man, for taking the time to come on and, and share it. I enjoyed talking with you. Oh, it's my pleasure, Wes, and thank you for having me. I mean, it's, I've, I have, you know, this happened way earlier this year, and I have held this in the whole freaking time, man, because I, I don't know. I don't know who to go. Hey, by the way, I hit this huge orangutan on the highway doing 70 miles an hour almost, and it didn't do any damage to my car. And oh, yeah, there was this bright flash and it was gone. You know, who are you going to tell that to? You know, so yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks again, Doug. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is Wes at SasquatchChronicles.com. You get a chance to check out SasquatchChronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Until next time, everyone. Save me from myself, let me drive